Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Photography with Emery and that would be me. And on today's episode I'm going to be talking about how your camera actually meters and exposes the image. Let's get started. Let's start with how the vast majority of digital cameras measure light. Simply said, cameras have a built-in light meter that measures the light reflected off of the environment you're shooting. That would include things like your subject, the sky, the ground, and whatever else is in your scene. Keeping things simple and assuming the camera is set to automatic, it then tries to compute the proper aperture and shutter speed, together known as the exposure value, or EV. Actually, here's a table of exposure values, and there's a link in my blog to a more detailed website on this topic. In order to calculate the aperture and shutter speed for a photo, the brain of the camera tries to turn the image it sees into an 18% shade of grey. Because this process can get quite technical, actual varies, values may vary, but in general this works well to explain the topic. Now, because our world is not that simple, almost every object that you can think of will reflect light to a different degree based on its properties, like its color, how dull or shiny it is, etc., as well as the angle of its surface to the light source. Also, your camera is by no means as smart as you are, so it generalizes the entire scene into that 18% shade of grey, which may mean that your subject might end up being over or underexposed. So as long as your scene has a fairly even distribution of light through dark elements, then the system works quite well. But that's usually not the case, and you can get into situations like shooting a bright sky with a shaded landscape, or a snowy scene, and you'll notice that they don't quite turn out right. See how the ground is properly exposed in this example landscape image, but the sky is blown out? And snow should usually be a bright white, not a dull grey, as in the picture to the right. So, how can we correct the exposure? Well, there are actually quite a few answers to this question, and some of those answers can also be combined. To start with, many cameras have multiple metering modes. Now again, because there are differences between manufacturers and models of cameras, I'll touch upon the three most common generalized types. Multimetering, center weight, and spot metering. In multimetering mode, your camera will use multiple points throughout the whole frame that it samples in order to calculate the exposure value. The center weight metering mode samples a moderately large central area of the frame, and spot metering quite literally uses a tiny area, commonly around 2-4% of the image, again located in the center of the frame, to calculate the exposure value. You can also control the exposure by using either your shutter button or some cameras actually have an auto exposure lock button on the back. And the way that works, we'll start with the shutter button, is that for example I want to shoot something over here but I like the exposure I would get in this area. Then I would aim my camera in that direction, hold down the shutter button halfway and that would lock the exposure. I keep holding that button halfway, I move back, and I take my picture. Now the bad part about this is that, uh, depending on how you have your camera set up, this can also lock the focus, and if you lock the focus too, your subject might be closer or further away here and your focus will be off. But again, some cameras you can actually set it up that if you hold the button halfway, it'll only lock the exposure, and when you move over and push fully down, it'll actually uh, do the autofocus. The other way you can do it is some cameras have an auto exposure lock button. This is probably the better way of doing it. And what you can do again is I want the exposure over here, but my picture over there. I hold down this button and I move over and then I take my picture. And that way the exposure is locked over here, but I'm actually taking my picture in this area. But again, there are some downsides to this and I'll cover a little bit more on my blog uh, about this topic. You can also use filters to control your exposure. For example, I've got a graduated neutral density filter here and you can see it's kind of a half and half. It gets darker on one half. And these work great for, for example, landscape shots. Uh, but the use of filters, I'll cover that in more detail in the future. But there are some other ways, uh, better ways you can control exposure with your camera. You could also employ the use of a light meter to measure incident light. Incident light comes directly from the light source and is not reflected off of any object. This type of measurement uh, results in very accurate exposure values and also contributes to the reason why many professional photographers use them. For now, I'll leave light meters to a future episode, as most novice photographers don't own one anyway. Better light meters can also be quite costly, and although they aren't that difficult to use, they are beyond the scope of this video.
And the last method I'm covering is to use exposure compensation, where in essence we adjust the exposure value that the camera has come up with to suit our needs. The exposure compensation button is usually represented with the plus or minus icon, and depending on your camera model, it may allow you to adjust the exposure value anywhere within a plus or minus two to five stop range, usually in increments of third, half, and full stops. Exposure compensation only works when your camera is in P or programmed auto, shutter priority, or aperture priority modes. If you're using manual mode, then you've already done the hard work of specifying exactly what the exposure should be by selecting the shutter speed and aperture yourself. In P mode, the exposure compensation works by manipulating the shutter speed, aperture, or both, whereas in shutter priority, where you set the shutter speed, it adjusts the aperture. And in aperture priority, where you set the f-stop, exposure compensation adjusts the shutter speed. And you'll note on this table how the aperture and shutter speed is affected by changing the exposure compensation setting. In regard to what this looks like when you take photos, these three images should give you a good idea. Now I shot these pictures in aperture priority with the same f-stop and sensitivity, so you can easily see how the exposure compensation affected the shutter speed in each case. At this point you probably get the idea of how to adjust your camera's exposure value, but you might be wondering which method or combination of methods would be best to use. This, unfortunately, is not an easy answer because of the massive variety of things you can take photographs of and what your specific needs or wants are, not to mention whether your goals are to produce a technically correct exposure or a creative one. You've probably heard this a million times already, but it rings quite true. Practice and experiment with different settings. Once you start to understand and see how your camera behaves, you'll be able to better adapt to the various scenarios that you'll face. Thanks for joining me on this week. Hopefully you have a better idea about uh, metering and exposure and how your camera does that kind of stuff. Next week I'll be talking about white balance. And uh, do check out my blog. As usual, I have additional information there and links covering this topic in more detail. And also remember to subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with my videos. And I certainly hope to see you next week.